Welcome, welcome, one and all in here, out there, and all the ships at sea to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. I just want to... I don't start tonight... I, I, just, I just want to start tonight by saying, calm down. <laughs> There's no reason to panic. And I know that because of the screaming all-caps headlines that say, no reason to panic. <laughs> Unfortunately, having no reason is my favorite way to panic. All of this is because there's some alarming news from Ohio representative and man who just walked in on his son playing catch with another dad, <laughs> Mike Turner. Turner, who is the Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, released an unusual statement today warning of a serious national security threat without providing any additional details, okay? That's unnecessarily vague. It's like labeling a pack of cigarettes, Surgeon General's warning, trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> Now, we, di we didn't get much more than that, right? We didn't get much more than that, other than reports that the threat is related to Russia. Oh, my God. Is it a bioweapon? Is, is it cyber warfare? Are they sending Steven Seagal back? <laughs> well, whatever it is, Turner wants the White House to release the details of the threat to the public immediately. Now, for their part, the White House said... They were planning a congressional briefing for tomorrow, adding that they couldn't do it today because they're a little busy stocking up on canned goods. <laughs> now, uh, other congressmen on the Intelligence Committee have stepped forward to call for calm. One Connecticut congressman, Jim Himes, said, I don't want people thinking that Martians are landing or that your Wednesday is going to be ruined. <laughs> Martians are landing? Oh, great, now my Wednesday's ruined. <laughs> So that, that was our mid-afternoon panic, right? Mid-afternoon panic. By late afternoon, we got, we got some more details from sources with access to highly classified information. So anyone who used the bathroom at Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> Reportedly, the threat is Russia wanting nuclear weapons in space. But before you get too worried, the nukes would not be to drop a weapon on Earth from orbit, but to possibly use against satellites. Reminds me of that famous quote from Oppenheimer, now I am become death, destroyer of GPS. Find your own way to Costco, suckers. <laughs> so again, again, I cannot say this enough, there is no reason to panic about that. The only reason to panic is if you forgot it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> you still have 20 minutes to save your marriage. Now, it's, this is an extra special Valentine's Day this year because Valentine's Day and Ash Wednesday fall on the same day, which explains why the top gift at CVS this year was an adorable toy bear that says, For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. <laughs> now, for any of my viewers out there who aren't Catholic, these holidays are very different. Valentine's Day is all about sensual indulgence and making love, while Ash Wednesday is a day of fasting and reflection marking the start of Lent. Some Catholics may be tempted to celebrate both, but one bishop out there warns Ash Wednesday, with its fasting and abstinence requirements, is far more significant and should be prioritized. <laughs> Sounds like somebody didn't get a Valentine's last year. <laughs> hmm? Bishop? <laughs> this Valentine's Day, nearly half of U.S. adult population is unmarried. Half. Which means, statistically speaking, there's a 50% chance that if you're married, your spouse is not. <laughs> ask. Always ask. With this increase in singles, reports show that self-gifting is on the rise. Now, remember, the Catholic Church is against that, too. <laughs> what I don't... Mm. So... Really? Okay. Okay. That's a stroker. What I don't understand is, what's the difference between self-gifting and just buying things? This year, I'm gifting myself an oil change and a pack of gum. <laughs> God, I'm such a terrible gift giver. I have to break up with me, but I can't do it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's not just singles celebrating themselves, because this Valentine's Day, polyamory is getting more attention. Mostly from that one couple who keeps saying, did we tell you we're polyamorous now? <laughs> because we are, and it's totally cool with both of us, right? <laughs> Honey? <laughs> She's cool with it. Now, as a happily married monogamist, I would never go in for polyamory because who has the time? <laughs> or the energy? A two-person relationship is already work enough. In fact, I'm so busy that me and Evie work our date nights into the show now. She's on tonight. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Don't 
Darling, darling, do enjoy these jokes about polyamory. <laughs> They're just jokes. <laughs> Donald Trump celebrated the day by writing a valentine to his wife Melania and then having his campaign send a mass email blast with the subject line, I love you, Melania. <laughs> Unsubscribe. <laughs> the actual text. Sure. The actual text of the Valentine is actually pretty weird. It reads, Dear Melania, I love you. Even after every single indictment, arrest, and witch hunt, you never left my side. Through thick and thin, no matter what the deal... No matter... Through thick and thin, no matter what deal the prosecutors offered you, you kept your trap shut. That's what I call love. Also what our prenup calls minimum negotiated terms. Okay? You signed. Last night. Is this just last night? Just last night tonight. Love. I love love. Last night, we got big election results in the special election to fill the House seat vacated by Republican fabulous George Santos, seen here appearing on television for the very last time. <laughs> Republicans were hoping to hang on to the seat with their candidate, a woman named Mozzie Pillip, but the clear winner was Democrat Tom Swazi, seen here... <laughs> seen here at SeaWorld begging for fish. <laughs> Swazi, or the Swaz, as no one calls him, won by a commanding eight-point lead and delivered a victory speech last night where he laid out his vision for America. It's time to find common ground and start delivering for the people of the United States of America. Let's take our country back from the dividers. So listen, do you want to take the country back from the people who are trying to divide it? Yes. Are you with me in that fight? Yes. And just so we're clear, there are two groups of people out there. The uniters, that's us. And the dividers, that's them. <laughs> and we're gonna crush them beneath our iron boots, right? Death to dividers! <laughs> Death! <laughs> Swazi also had some thank yous to give out. I wanna thank the chairman of the Queen's Republican Party, Greg Meeks. <laughs> and the... Did I say Republican? <laughs> I don't want to thank... I don't want to thank the chairman of the Queen's Republican Party. I want to thank the chairman of the Queen's Democratic Party. Oof. <laughs> With mix-up like that, a lot of people are asking if Swazi's too old to be president. <laughs> now, uh, the district Swazi now represents is the most diverse district in the United States. And he made sure to shout out to all of his supporters. I want to thank the Jewish voters of my district who stuck with me. I want to thank the Chinese Americans who helped me in this race. I want to thank the Korean Americans. I want to thank the Indian Americans, the Pakistani and the Bangladeshis, the Muslim community, African Americans, the Latino Americans, the white Irish and Italian guys. I want to thank the women. And uh, I want to thank, uh, I want to thank uh, men who are under 5'5". Five five. I see you, short kings. <laughs> Uh, I gotta thank uh, Magnus, this one Icelandic American guy I see sometimes. Uh, let's see, who am I leaving out? Left-handed ghosts? <laughs> now, this is a swing district, so it's not a shock that a centrist like Pillip didn't seek Donald Trump's endorsement, and the fact that she didn't made him mad, as he posted last night on Truth Social, Republicans, just don't learn. I have an almost 99% endorsement success rate in primaries and a very good number in general elections. Yes. If she would just would have embraced Trump, she could have joined the ranks of success stories like Senator Oz, <laughs> Senator Brain Damage, and Governor Different Kind of Brain Damage. <laughs> Trump, Trump Truth Dawn. MAGA, which is most of the Republican Party, stayed home, and it always will, unless it is treated with the respect that it deserves. I stayed out of the race. I want to be loved. <laughs> wow. wow, that came out of nowhere. His subconscious just jumped up his throat and strangled his brain. 
<laughs> right in the middle of his screed. We must get out of NATO because they aren't paying their fare. I want love, Daddy. Please hug me. <laughs> hug me once. Share of the defense budget. So I would encourage Russia to give me fries, hungry mommy, and sex booby. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Mark Wahlberg and Lily Gladstone. But when we return, my wife, Evie, and I have some first drafts of Valentine's cards and a special announcement.